I was doing some percentage questions with a student yesterday and I realized these kind of examples would be really useful to use on my channel because even though I've covered briefly percentages in another video, I haven't covered this particular style of percentage question too often or in any depth. So this video is gonna start fairly easy and it's gonna get harder and harder and the final fifth example is extremely hard. I've called it beast mode or final boss. If you can do that question, then you can do any of these style questions. The trick I've got for you today is mainly focused on the GRE because it relies on a calculator. But even if you're doing the GMAT, you could still use this trick in real life. Anyway, without further ado, what am I talking about? I'm talking about increasing and decreasing by a percentage on a calculator, but more importantly, how to reverse such an increase. Most people know how to increase, I will just quickly cover that, but they don't know how to quickly and easily reverse a percentage increase. Hint, it's not the same as decreasing. What am I talking about? Let's take this example first of all. Taylor has $1,500 saved up. Her savings grow by 15% after one year and then by a further 8% the year after. How much does Tay now have in savings? Now, most of you would probably get this right with a calculator, but you might do it a slow way. What you might do is divide 1500 by 100, times that by 15, and that gives you 15%, and then add that on to 1500, and then do the same thing for 8%. And if that's you, I'm gonna show you a very quick shortcut. Some of you, by the way, would have thought to increase in one go by 23%, because 15 plus eight is 23. That's definitely wrong. It doesn't work like that. So how would I do it with a calculator? Well, to increase by a percentage, you convert that percentage to a decimal. So 15% becomes 0 0.15. And you add that to the number one. You stick a number one at the front. In other words, increasing by 15% involves changing 15% into a decimal, 0 0.15, adding one to it, and then multiplying by the answer. Let's do for this example. If we start with 1500, to increase by 15%, we times by 1.15. That's really crucial. 15% as a decimal just means 0 0.15, but increasing by 15% is times 1.15. There's an extra one there at the start. And that one represents keeping the original amount. We don't just want to find 15%, that would be multiplying by 0 0.15, the raw decimal. We want to increase by 15%. So we multiply by 1.15. The one keeps the original, and then we add on 0.15. That's the increase of 15%. And how would you then increase by 8%? You multiply by 1.08. That is 8% as a decimal with a one at the front. And this is the quickest way in the GRE to increase by percentage. So in this example, it will be 1500, the original amount, times 1.15 to increase by 15%, times 1.08 to increase by 8%, giving us the final answer of 1863. Now, maybe half of you are thinking that's an amazing trick. Thank you very much, Philip. And for those, just leave a like and leave a comment. But others are thinking, yeah, I knew this already. I kind of get this. Why am I going over this again? it's the next example that I really wanted to emphasize, reversing that increase. This is the example that many people would struggle with. What do I mean? Well, let's take the following question. Nusaira saw her salary increase by 12% to 26,880. What was her salary before the increase? So we have an original unknown amount that was increased by 12%, to 26,880. But what was her salary before the increase? I call this reversing an increase or reverse percentages. But you notice how it's different to the other question. We're not increasing 26,880 by 12%. We're trying to undo that increase. And let me just emphasize this. What we don't do is find 12% of 26,880 and then take that away. That's definitely wrong. Increasing by 50% and then decreasing by 50% doesn't get you back to the original amount. Think of 100. If we increase 100 by 50%, we're at 150. Decrease 150 by 50%, then we're down to 75. 
we're not back to 100. So in this example, to undo a 12% increase, we don't just take away 12%. That won't get us back to her original salary. So what do we do? Well, we use the knowledge that we gained in the previous example. How do you increase something by 12%? You multiply by 1.12. That's what we saw in the last example. So as I've written down below, everything starts with an N. Pretend the original amount is X or N in this case. And if you agree to pretend that the original amount is N, then we can create this amazing mini equation. We would have N, the original, times 1.12, that's the increase of 12%, equals her new salary, 26,880. It's a lovely little mini equation that we can now solve. All because we pretended to start with the letter N, the amount N. And also because we remembered that to increase by 12% means multiplied by 1.12. How would we solve this equation? Well, we want to work out N, so to get rid of the times by 1.12, we divide both sides by 1.12. We don't subtract by 1.12 because it's not plus 1.12. To reverse the times, we divide. So we divide both sides by 1.12 and that will tell us what N is. In this case, that would be 24,000. So that was her salary before the 12% increase. So it's really important for you to remember that you don't undo an increase by decreasing by that percentage. You reverse an increase by pretending that we started with N, then going through the steps to set up an equation, N times the increase equals a new amount, and then reversing that by dividing both sides by the multiplier. Yes, it's a lot harder than just timesing by an amount or dividing by an amount, but that's how we solve it properly. So that's covered increasing by a percentage and reversing an increase, but you can now probably predict what I'm gonna go on to. We're going to decrease by a percentage. How do we decrease by a percentage? Athera saw her $28,000 salary decrease by 25%. What was her salary after the decrease? Now there's a nice way of remembering what to do. Do you remember with percentage increase, we added a one at the front. We did one plus the decimal. Well, for percentage decrease, we do one minus the decimal. We do one minus the percentage. In this case, one minus 0.25 is 0.75. So we multiply by 0.75 to decrease by 25%. Let me quickly give you another couple of examples. As I've written down below, if we want to decrease by 10%, that means that we're now at 90%, right? So we times by 0.9. To decrease by 5%, we times by 0.95. To decrease by 12%, we times by 0.88. To decrease by 1.5%, we multiply by 0.985. It's always one take away the decimal version of the percentage you're decreasing by. So in this example, to decrease her 28,000 dollar salary by 25%, we multiply 28,000 by 0.75, giving us the answer 21,000. This is the quickest and most efficient way to decrease by a percentage. But now we know this, let's again try to reverse a decrease using the trick we saw earlier. Let's try an example. Kevin saw his salary decrease by 12% to 17,600. What was his salary before the decrease? Notice we're trying to go back to an original amount. And this is where the setting up the equation comes in. It's easy when you're doing loads of the same example as we did earlier to spot the equation you have to set up. But would you, looking at this question, think about setting up an equation? You would have to set up an equation because we're trying to get back to an original amount. We're trying to reverse, in this case, a percentage decrease. And the way to reverse a percentage decrease is to pretend the original amount is N again. It all comes back to setting up those mini equations. As I've written here, pretend we started with N, and if his original salary was N, it got decreased by 12%. So it got multiplied by 0.88. As we saw, that's how to decrease by 12%. 
and it now equals 17,600. How do we solve that mini equation? We divide both sides by 0.88. Now, after you've seen this example, I want you to ask yourself, would you have thought by looking at this question to do the equation? And maybe write some notes to yourself of how you can remember that we need to set up an equation. One suggestion I've got is anytime you're trying to find an original amount and there's been some sort of percentage change, that's when you need to set up an equation. Or you could remember it as any time you're trying to reverse a percentage increase or decrease. That's when you need to pretend the original amount is n and solve the mini equation. However you remember it, that's the number one obstacle you've got to getting these kind of very common GRE questions right, is remembering to set up the equation and not just doing, I don't know, 17,600 times 1.12 to increase by 12% and get back to the original. That's the wrong way, that won't work. If you can remember to use this method, and if you can use the method correctly, you've won the battle about getting these very common GRE questions right. Almost guaranteed one question like this will come up in the test. So really important that you know what to do. Now in a way, all of this has been in preparation for the final very difficult question. And if everything I've said and done so far has felt a little bit too easy, and I'd be impressed at that, but if it's felt a bit too easy, then have your best go at the last question here. Over three years, Philip saw his salary increase by 5%, then decrease by 20%, and then increase by 30%. After the changes, his salary was worth that amount. If, instead of these changes, his salary had grown by 6% a year, how much would his salary now be? What I would say now to any student who's made it this far, first of all, well done, and second of all, pause the video, try and get as far as you can into this question before seeing my explanation. This will really test how much you've taken in in terms of undoing these percentage increases and percentage decreases. Try your best, good luck if you get it, that's really impressive. And now I'm gonna cover what I would do. So we're trying to get what his original salary was and then we can answer the final question later on. But first we need to know what Philip's original salary was. So it's gonna be one of those times we invent the N again. So if his original salary was N, and then it increased by 5%, we would do N times 1.05. If it then decreased by 20%, we would then times 0.8. And then if it increased by 30%, we would times 1.3. And then we would write equals the final amount, 87,360. And that gives us our first equation. Now, what about all those numbers in the middle? Kind of awkward, right? times 1.05 times 0.8. Bring them all together just by multiplying the numbers. 1.05 times 0.8 times 1.3 is indeed 1.092. So it just neatly brings those three multiplications into one number. Finally, as always, to solve this equation, we simply divide by the multiplier. So we divide both sides by 1.092, giving us his original salary, which was $80,000. Now, in many medium level questions, that will be the end of the question, but here we need to do something else. It says if, instead of these changes that occurred, his salary, his original salary, had instead grown by 6% a year, how much would his salary now be? How can we grow this amount by 6% a year for three years? I guess I should have clarified in the question, this is for three years. We would multiply by 1.06. To increase by 6%, we multiply by 1.06, and we're gonna do this three times. We could have done power of three, but the GRE calculator isn't that good, so I'm just gonna times by 1.06 three times, giving us 95,281.28. That is the hypothetical salary that Philip would have had if instead of changing by the three percentages they gave us, it had instead changed by 6% growth a year. Fairly meaty question, but it is a great way to practice those two core concepts of how to reverse a percentage increase and reverse a percentage decrease. I really hope you learned a lot from this video. If you did, leave a like and a comment. If you didn't, you know what, leave a like and a comment anyway. <laughs> Whatever. See you in the next video.